Okay, today we're going to be looking at minerals and their properties. And most of you have seen minerals and uh, noted that some minerals are very pretty. Uh, but we're going to be talking about uh, the uses of minerals. And uh, at the end, you have a set of unknowns in front of you that you'll be identifying. So minerals are important because all of our metals that we need come from minerals. Uh, this mineral provides most of the iron for the world. Other minerals provide lead and aluminum. Uh, minerals also provide materials like clay to, to make bricks and ceramics or some minerals like this one we use to make glass. Uh, so minerals have our predominant uses in everyday life. And another thing about minerals is they're the building blocks of rocks. So we actually identify different kinds of rocks based on the minerals they're made out of. This one is comprised of pink feldspars and quartz. And when you get that combination together, we call that granite. Uh, other rocks are made of different minerals and have other names. So this one, has, this gabbro, has no quartz or feldspar like the granite. Okay, for a substance to be a mineral, it has to meet a five-part definition. First, it has to be naturally occurring, uh, so basically uh, generally found in the earth and not made through man-made activities. Uh, second, it has to be inorganic, so it's not a biological, a result of biological activities, and generally minerals don't have carbon in them. Uh, the third, it has to be a solid, like this. Uh, so. If any of these melt, they're no longer minerals. And they also have a constant chemical composition. This one always has uh, an atom of silicon for every two atoms of oxygen. It's called quartz or silicon dioxide. And minerals also have a constant atomic structure. And so that gives us a constant crystalline shape for all minerals. Uh, as like quartz here has a six-sided or hexagonal shape. Because of the constant atomic structure uh, and constant com composition, minerals tend to have constant reliable properties. And one of those properties is how they break. Uh, this one, quartz, turns out if you tap on it and get it to break, you just can't predict how it's going to do that. That's called fracture because quartz has no weak planes in its atomic structure in the crystals. Other minerals have something called cleavage, and those actually do have planes of weakness. So this mica peels off in weak planes, uh, making sheets of mica. Uh, here's another one, gypsum. Uh, you can see it has vertical uh, crystal faces, and if I tap on it, it will come off in the same kinds of crystal faces. So that's another kind of cleavage. Another property of minerals is color, and that makes some minerals look very pretty, like this one, a nice purple color, uh, but it turns out color isn't always reliable uh, to identify minerals. Some minerals come in lots of different colors if you just look at their natural um, crystal faces, but we can get a much more reliable sense of their color through powdering the mineral and making something called a streak. And so here's a piece of pyrite that I can rub on a piece of white porcelain here called a streak plate, and instead of having a gold uh, color to it, uh, which is, this is called fool's gold, when we streak it, you don't get fooled anymore, that might be gold because you get a nice black streak, and that tells us this is a mineral pyrite. Uh, here's an iron mineral called hematite, and it's nice and shiny silvery in nature, but if we rub it on the streak plate, we get a reddish brown streak, kind of the color of dried blood. Okay, some other properties of minerals include one called hardness, which we use a scale of 1 to 10 to rate them. And hardness sounds like how hard you can hit the mineral without it breaking, but actually hardness is how easily a mineral is scratched. And this mineral, quartz, is very hard and therefore very difficult to scratch. 
So when I try to scratch it with this metal knife, it leaves a silver streak because the quartz is harder than the steel. Uh, other minerals uh, are soft enough that you can actually scratch them with your fingernail. Your fingernail has a hardness of two and a half, so when it scratches a mineral, then that means that mineral's hardness is less than two and a half, or very easy to scratch. And this one, the gypsum, is very soft. Uh, one of the softest minerals is graphite, which actually is so soft, a piece of paper will scratch the graphite onto the paper. And that has a hardness of one, so it's at the low end of the scale. Diamond is the hardest mineral known, it has a number 10 at the top of the scale. Another property is that some minerals are attracted to things, special things. Uh, this is a magnet, and this mineral, magnetite, is identifiable because the magnet will stick to it. Whereas other minerals like quartz and pyrite, the magnet just falls off. And a few minerals even have taste, so if you put this one in your mouth, you can taste table salt right away or halite. And then some minerals actually are chemically reactive. And this mineral, if you put a special liquid on it, it actually fizzes. Uh, this mineral is calcite, made out of calcium carbonate. And when it reacts with hydrochloric acid, it actually gives off bubbles of carbon dioxide. Okay, I mentioned earlier, one of the most important things about minerals is that we can get valuable things we need from the earth through mineral deposits. And uh, many of our important minerals are called ores. If you can make a profit from the mineral uh, by processing it and get what you need, then it's called an ore. And this is the ore of lead. This chemical formula is easy to remember because it's PBS, or lead sulfide. Okay, so we could take this lead ore, galena, and which is lead sulfide, and put it in a furnace to smelt it. So the PBS and oxygen with heat goes off as sulfur oxides and leaves the lead behind. The problem is sulfur oxides are major pollutants because in the atmosphere, in the clouds, they react with water and the sulfur oxides are socks and that makes sulfuric acid rain H2SO4. So what uh, we need to do now when we process these sulfur ores is use a wet gas scrubber which in the stacks causes this reaction to occur and then we can capture the H2SO4. Okay so now that you know about minerals and their properties, uh, get out your box of unknowns and we're going to use the properties of these unknowns to identify what minerals you have.